Coach Greg. In today's video, we're going over the real reason that your content and reputation has kind of gone to shit. <laughs> By now, you've likely seen Greg in some capacity on the internet. Maybe from your favorite influencer teaming up with him to do something, or maybe you choose to follow him, which I know I used to, an interesting choice. Of course, when I followed him, that was before his entire persona had ever changed. You'd think a guy that had done a bunch of gear in his lifetime would sound a hell of a lot different than a grown Manny Heffley. Piggy says you are going to have an accident. 75 years later. I didn't even make it up. It's on the net, you moron. Stop being a moron. And I don't know if you knew this, because many people just don't flat out. They're new to Greg. But his whole voice and persona is just an act. So what I did in the past, I spoke what I thought was the most intelligent way. I would present information as a school teacher would. Very boring and monotonous. No one was watching my videos. And then when I talked and I was more excited and I was passionate about what I was speaking about, I would talk more like this. And the comments were, boy, you sure do have passion. That was very interesting. I was on the edge of my feet the whole time. And so I realized, makes more sense that all the videos I should do, I should get excited about. And so when I do a video, I get excited, I'm passionate, I'm having fun. Fun, and so that's why my voice sounds like this. Now, if you aren't a early Greg viewer, you're gonna have to go back earlier than last time to see what he sounded like when he originally used to post videos. Calm, collected, concise. You're not eating it for your health. You're eating it because it tastes good. Don't kid yourself. Peanut butter, when you're a little kid, you love peanut butter. You grow up, it doesn't change. Peanut butter tastes amazing. Problem is, it has way too many calories. But somewhere along the lines, Greg turned into a huge narcissist. I am so much more authentic than you believe. Of all the people that we spoke about here, Mike, Johnny, Greg, Derek, I am by a mile. I'm so much more authentic. I'll tell you how much money I sold on Black Friday. Oh, Greg, don't announce that. Don't tell people how much you're selling. I don't care. I'm that honest. I can tell you exactly. I am authentic. I'm myself. I tell you the truth. I overshare information. And so one thing I'm not is a liar. I'm the realest of the real. There is no one I can think of that is more real than me. And already, we're not off to a good start. Now, I don't know who lied to you, Greg, but being over the top like this is the opposite of being authentic. And it's definitely going to boost engagement momentarily, but it's certainly not about improving engagement and quality of engagement over a long period of time. I mean, I'm no expert, but ask anyone who's gained a sizable following. I'm sure they would collectively agree that being vulnerable with your audience and authentic is the key way to gain their trust trust and build reputation with them. Of course, there has to be some amount of dramatized content, but they're able to mix that in with being humble and vulnerable in many different situations. Now, based on Greg's content, his only form of traction has really been gained from doing one of two things. A, negative engagement, or B, producing negative content. I'm pretty sure we're all clued in on what Greg's content production strategy just looks like. Basically, wake up, find someone to produce content about, and you're able to talk shit about and make sure that they're doing better than you in life and then post about 20 videos about them doing things wrong and you doing them right. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Lather, rinse, and repeat. Always repeat. Homer J. Will you teach us to make love? So let's just look at one example here in which we're going to dive a bit deeper into. We're all familiar with the Trend Twins, right? You know, these are the guys that basically started doing gear quite a bit younger than everybody else, making jokes about Trend, being basically rambunctious and destructive fitness influencers that everyone had some bit of alignment with. Their personality was a bit deranged, and I think people generally like watching that kind of derangement as entertainment. Not the best people in the world, but not the worst either. But you you might not be familiar with the fact that Greg has actually produced 22 videos on the Trend Twins, half of which were only in the past two months. Like, holy shit, I hope he is paying them for this kind of content because he's literally just recycling all the work that they put into their content, publishing it on his channel, and then calling it good. I mean, literally his whole online presence seems to be dependent on these people posting content. So to return the favor here, there's quite a bit I'm going to unpack in this video talking about the situation, and my intention is ultimately to show you that Greg might not be the strongest influencer nor the most respectable authority within the fitness and bodybuilding space. And some of you definitely might think he is, and hopefully I can show you what is the reality of the situation. I'm the realest of the real. 
There is no one I can think of that is more real than me. So with that being said, let's circle back to the Trend Twins and unpack a bit of their story because the affair between Greg and the Trend Twins goes deep. Now, the twins recently competed in an NPC show, an amateur show, their first show that they've ever done together. It was the state championships, and they did it as uh, one of them being an open bodybuilder and one of them being a classic physique bodybuilder. And shockingly enough, they actually placed pretty well, which makes sense. They're highly developed individuals. They've been doing this for quite some time. They just not actually put it to use by stepping on stage. Mike won his novice and open class, whereas Chris placed second overall, which again, for first time competitors, is extremely impressive stuff. But it wouldn't be a milestone if you didn't have Coach Greg in your corner yelling at you, telling you how to absolutely not do a bodybuilding prep and using you as an example, which Greg absolutely did. <laughs> you want to hear that the Trend Twins won and they dominated and they got their IBB Pro cards. The truth is they won amateur novice first time competitions or competitions against people who aren't very good and they were not in shape. I mean, Jesus Christ, way to kick off the first 10 seconds of a video. You're already slamming them for what, honestly? Okay, they might not be pro caliber yet, but what the fuck happened to just being supportive in the fitness industry? With an attitude like this, you're never going to give anyone a chance to even try. These two literally just competed in their first show. They have multiple business ventures and much more going than just bodybuilding. I'm actually surprised they were able to pull this together honestly. He goes on to actually make one of the most absurd claims I've ever heard in the fitness industry regarding someone competing. So in the true novice division, the Trend Twins, they dominated. But didn't you think this was the case? And in the novice competition, this is for competitors who also suck. They've never placed in the top five. They perhaps have competition experience, but they didn't do very good. But here's the thing. The Trend Twins have over one and a half million followers and it's a channel dedicated towards bodybuilding. And so in my opinion, these these guys are experts. They're not novice. They're not true novice. They are open class bodybuilders training for their IFBB Pro card. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the Trend Twins ever actually said they were committed to bodybuilding full time. Sure, they're bodybuilders, but not being competitive. They're just talking about bodybuilding for fun. As far as I understand, they got their following from an absolute array of different attitudes from being meatheads, fighting each other, doing weird things and making trend jokes and ultimately exposing their lifestyles, being vulnerable, not because they're the next Ronnie Coleman's or that they're going to be an IFBB pro anytime soon. The vast majority of huge fitness influencers on YouTube and other spaces aren't the ones who actually have competitive goals in bodybuilding. I know myself, like operating a coaching business, YouTube full-time and all these other things, it's virtually impossible to be a competitive bodybuilder. If on the other hand, they claim to be an expert, they claim to be professionals and showed up on show day as the authority and failed and bombed the show, it would be a completely different story. But instead, they just leisurely went on stage, they did their best, and Greg seemed to just pick apart everything that they did. And funny enough, there's no way I'm the first person that realizes this. You have people like Lex Little and many other influencers in the comment sections talking about Greg and how kind of, to be honest, he's a shitbag. The guy knows that using them for money is literally as simple as a click of a button. And that's exactly why, like I said before, he made over 20 fucking videos of them. And as much as he argues in these videos that he does it because he cares, I ultimately think that a few publicly monetized videos don't really display genuine care towards someone at all. Truth is, he's been doing this for years and now the vast majority are aware of it. With even Greg's own subreddit having so much slander to speak on him. Comment sections with other influencers that have much further of a reach than Greg trashing him. But the reason I brought up the trend to isn't actually because of its recency. It goes significantly deeper than that. See, recently a video from Coach Kyle has surfaced and he talks about calling basically Greg a pedo. Went as far as pausing the video on your end and highlighting their private parts in numerous segments of your video, you pause on their junk and even speak about it. Totally unacceptable, gross behavior. It's pedo-like, it's very weird.
Now look, I'm not going to be the next guy to plaster the Trend Twins stuff up on screen here, but I think it is important to show you sort of what the situation is from an unbiased perspective, and then maybe you can come to some form of conclusion. So I'm going to show you the screenshot from their video, which was publicly available anyways, and we can go from there. The reason that this photo is important is because Greg proposed that they were intentionally doing this as a way of displaying themselves in a sexual manner, even claiming that they were wearing female bikini bottoms to do so. Now, Greg, I don't know how clueless you really are about bodybuilding. For someone that actually feels the need to include IFBB Pro in your username and in all social media intros, and by the way, I'm in no way calling you a pedophile. I don't throw around claims like that, and I'm not pointing at any weird things. I'm just saying that this is an odd fucking behavior. But let's just take a look. Literally, the first site that pops up when I search in bodybuilding posing trunks, right here. And I would argue that these first two items look pretty damn familiar to the ones that the Trend Twins were wearing. Now, just to be clarifying here, if you're so keen on looking at dudes' dicks that you've never seen a bikini show, the bikini looks nothing like the men's trunks. I mean, for one, they're bedazzled to hell, but secondly, the bottom piece is literally a G-string. There's a pretty foundational difference there, Greg. And it's funny to me how you say stuff like this. So you can't just make up a lie and post it about somebody because it's a lie. It's, it's illegal. You can't actually do that. Okay. It's not legal. So what these people did is they made up a lie and made YouTube videos about it. Now, the difference between what they're doing and what I'm doing is I'm not making up lies. And you're allowed to say what you think. Yet that's literally the foundation of your entire channel at this point. It seems like Greg never really learns his lesson, but if you have the balls to threaten to sue people for hurting your feelings... And um, something I never told you guys before, he threatened to sue me because he didn't like something that I said in a video. Eventually, shit's gonna come back around. A lot of Greg's self-defense in this scenario was just saying that, hey, I was just showing what they showed. But dude, nobody goes talking about the Mr. Olympia's trunks and how different they are from one another or what they're packing beneath their trunks ever. Unless, you know, some people are weird and like to buy fucking trunks from the DMs and shit. I don't know. It's a thing. And the Trend Twins didn't even go as far as like swinging their dicks in front of the screen or anything crazy like that, but you took it as far as asking a female for her opinion on which one of the twins has a bigger dick. Are you guys Johnson's the same size? Now, earlier, of which you didn't listen to this, this woman to my left, she actually said, well, I, who did you say was bigger? The one that was bigger. Who do you think was bigger? Mike. Isn't he doing and so she thought Mike had the bigger downstairs because he appeared to be a bit bigger. I'm like, it has nothing to do with your size. If you have 50 pounds of extra muscle, it doesn't mean the downstairs is bigger. If anything, the balls are gonna look smaller, which could in fact make the Johnson look that much bigger. I'm the real winner looking at this photo. I'm gonna argue that you are the loser by looking at this photo, but hey, that's just my opinion. To each their own. Staring at one thing and one thing only right now. I'm not sure that me, perhaps I'm hoping it's Chris's longer hair. Kinda looks like Kramer. Are they sharing the same panties? Well, clearly not. One has red panties and the other has blue panties. And what they are is female posing trunks. They have the scrunch bum in the back to give the overall illusion of having even greater gluteus than last time. In what world is it appropriate to discuss someone's penis size for your own monetary benefit? I mean, you cannot walk this backwards in no way, shape, or form. You couldn't have been more direct about speaking about their dicks and can even clearly see yourself zooming in in the video, which is something they themselves did not do in their video. Now, this coach Coach Kyle guy is coming for Greg's throat, and rightfully so. Greg seems to think that Kyle's jealous he's not getting attention. So here's the thing. I don't have a single Coach Kyle video, and so perhaps he's mad about that. I make videos about his clients, not him. I could care less who the coach is. The Trend Twins, Alex Eubank, Jesse James West, James English, Anton, the list goes on and on. The coach is irrelevant here. I'm talking about these athletes. These athletes are very famous and people want to hear videos of me talking about them. Kyle thinks that it's all him. He wants all the limelight, all the glory. I wasn't poking the bear. I'm talking about the Trend Twins, not Coach Kyle. To me, it just seems like a really shitty way 
way to redirect attention and pin Kyle as the jealous one and see if that trumps what you did wrong. And you can't complain that being called a pedo is going to damage your personal image when you're clearly doing much worse to virtually everybody who posts anything, but specifically the trend twins. You make it look like there's something wrong with me. I'm a creep. But pedo literally means children, kids, not men in their 20s children despite the trend twins being adults greg's audience is still very young it doesn't let him off the hook from displaying two males genitalia on screen of course covered but still zoomed in and talking about their dick size to a non-age restricted audience i.e these videos are displayed to children and people under the age of 18. something kyle mentions in his video is that for greg to be going in so hard on the twins he must have some kind of resentment towards them. And I believe that definitely plays a role here. Because if you didn't know, the twins were actually coached by Greg himself. And then obviously they left him for this other individual, Kyle. That brings me to a question that perhaps the reason you're making all these videos, other than chasing clout, hoping to be relevant more so than you actually already were, is because you have some type of resentment because the trend twins left you. So now let's review why. Why did the trend twins leave Coach Greg? And the simple answer to that is because you couldn't get the job done. You couldn't get them to lose any weight. Now it's easy to point the finger and say, hey, they didn't follow the diet. I gave them a, a diet. Part of coaching is more than just providing someone with a diet, Greg. At the very least, if you're only providing a nutritional plan, at least make it make sense. And now look, there are countless clips of the trend twins crashing their diets. And so I'm willing to agree that their adherence to a protocol and in general, a coach's plan sucks. But in saying that, you can't point a finger and then say they're not doing it right when all you're doing is trying to provide guidance from pick a few recipes in this book, which is your cookbook. I mean, that is literally your nutritional coaching. Hey, here's this meal from the cookbook, use it. This is a plan prescribed by someone. It wasn't yeah. even a plan, bro. It, was it wasn't a plan. Bro. It was <laughs> pick three meals out of these cookbooks. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. Stay within this calorie range. Right? I mean, just taking a look at his website right now, I just want you guys to know his coaching costs are $15,000 for three months. Just in comparison, that is three times what I charge, except that's for an entire year. I'm still creating meal plans, training programs, personal one-on-one -on -one communication at a very high frequency, and I would argue that most coaches are at that price point. So for sure, I'd expect a fucking expert at that price with a far greater personalized service than that. Oh wait, so not only do you charge a ridiculous amount for a subpar service, but you also claim to be totally personalized only to fail on delivering that too. There was also the situation brought up in the same podcast with the Trend Twins where they claimed someone gave them fake gear, and that was during their time with Greg. Yeah. Fake ass gear, like, I ain't gonna lie, that shit, that shit fucked us up, yo. Bro, I'm talking about like, oh my gosh. I mean, I was having, I the don't know. The dude who gave it to us was literally we were only taking spoke trend as well. We were taking trend as well. That was when we were taking it. So I think the only real thing was the fucking trend. It so, was the only thing that makes sense. So I sense. was having dreams, man, of Kyle and Christian getting in deadly fucking accidents and dying. I'm like, in my dreams, like waking up, like, holy fuck. Like, I thought it was real. Like low like test, shit. but at the same so time. Zero I'm tests, trembling. just yeah, trend. We were dieting down too. And we were doing the macro bullshit. Mm -hmm. So I was just eating protein. Like, I'm talking to James. I think me and Anthony had a conversation, too. Mm -hmm. I showed you the blood work. Yeah. And uh, it said my test levels was 700 or some shit. And then, like, we kept going down the blood work, and it just kept getting fucking worse. Mm -hmm. And James we were, is like, bro, your we gear is like, fake, bro. He's like, your yeah, shit's Germer fake. Was, I looked at James. I was like, is it over for me, bro? Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> is it over, bro? He's like, man, I ain't going to lie to you. Like... <laughs> Yeah, you kind of got to stop. <laughs> it was definitely misinterpreted, and we now know Greg wasn't the one who sold them fake gear, but there's a big reason it wasn't absurd to believe this in the first place. You see, Greg likes to display himself now as anti-steroids, or woke. Why would you look up to Coach Greg? Not like this guy is a professional bodybuilder, used performance-enhancing drugs, quit them, 
And why? Because they're bad for you, can shorten your life. But you guys may not know this. Back in the day, Greg didn't just use steroids. He was his own full-blown drug operation and got busted back in 2012. Here we see that Greg Duchette is charged with possessing, smuggling, importing, and trafficking, and distributing steroids. And by the looks of it, he was obviously invading taxes as well. Now, to my understanding, especially for importing these kind of products, you were looking at some serious jail time in Canada. But shockingly enough, a few years later, he got away with basically a slap on the wrist and was fined $50,000 in serving his time outside of prison. Keep in mind here too, he was also selling fake steroids. Some of the products that the border agents tested actually had nothing in them at all. He was selling bunk gear to people all over Canada. And you'd think that Greg would learn his lesson from selling fake products, but not really. What happened was Greg went from illegally distributing anabolic steroids to now just selling snake oil online to youth and other kids. Just a few years ago, Greg opened up his company called Harder Than Last Time, HTLT. Amongst other scam products, some of which he honestly had to recall due to the amount of backlash, there is one I want to focus on, which is called Turk Builder Plus. In 2020, we saw the rise of an apparent new kind of supplement labeled the egg dye steroids. I think that's how it's pronounced. I've honestly heard it pronounced in different ways, ecti steroids, egg dye steroids, whatever. Essentially, it's a steroid hormone derived from plants and insects. This isn't actually the first time these substances have blown up in the fitness industry either, but they always seem to die out over the same reason. Reason. They have zero evidence of working at all, or even coming close to working as much as something like anabolic steroids do in humans, nor do they have any significant clinical evidence to support their use at all. Sounds bad enough as it is your flagship product to be nothing but snake oil. But beyond that, it is even more shocking to find out that the product doesn't even have the advertised substance in it to begin with. Greg says himself that what's actually in the product isn't in fact turquoise own, at least not in large quantities, only in trace amounts. But you're authentic and not a liar, right? He goes on to do a few really interesting things, we'll call it. The first thing he does is bring down any other turkestrone vendors by arguing that all of them don't actually have the substance in it and it's not labeled appropriately. Which, to be fair, a year later, it was actually proven in this study. And then he goes on to cover himself by saying the ectosteroids that are in his product are the only ones that cause an anabolic effect, with literally no science to back that. Obviously, there's two major issues with this. One, the motherfuckers marketing looks like this. How the fuck can you plaster real authentic turkestrone on the front of your page in your website after openly admitting there's trace amounts, barely trace amounts in your product? You ask your competition to prove their labels are true, yet you haven't even changed your own. The second thing is we have reports dating back to almost two decades ago, well before you ever came out with this product or the even recent ectosteroid craze and fad that tells us resistance trained males, the actual people who we want using this stuff theoretically, with the use of this supplement have zero anabolic effects. Greg even admitted to the fact that he doesn't care if they work or not. There was a demand for it, so he filled the demand. So he just sold things to people instead of selling things that would actually get results, or nothing else than a marketing scam to fill his pockets up and buy more Lamborghini Urises. People want us to sell it, and so we have a supply and demand thing. You demand it, we supply it? Why would I not sell something that the public wants me to sell? I have a supplement company and you want me to sell a supplement. Am I supposed to say, no, I refuse to sell it, but Coach Greg, we want it at an affordable price. Sorry, nope, I'm not going to sell. Why would I do that? Wanted to give you a product. Didn't know if it worked. How would I know? I had not tried it. Didn't know if it worked. How would I know? I had not tried it. Later on, I actually tried it and it worked. Did not expect it to work for me. I'm on HRT. Did not expect that once I added in Turk Builder, that I would feel significantly different, that I would get stronger, that I would feel better. But I did. And I did not lie. Not once, not for one second. And there's been one or two studies done on 20HG, which Greg is claiming that that's what's doing all the work. But generally, when a study displays that there was gains in muscle mass 
and strength with no proposed mechanism, they really typically mean absolutely nothing because evidently these studies aren't repeatable. However, we do have studies that prove the NO variants of ecti steroids bind to the human steroid receptor. Plus the 20HE study that I referenced and everyone references actually doesn't even measure skeletal muscle mass. They just measure total body mass. At this point, I don't even know if he needs calling out because he makes himself look bad enough as it is. His entire online presence is built on placing others in a negative light and his entire business model is literally selling snake oils in some bullshit cookbook where, to be honest, the $150 digital copy, you can find the recipes just about anywhere online by searching in whatever kind of recipe you want. Protein pancakes, protein pizza, protein shake, smoothie, ice cream, whatever. It's only a matter of time before Greg will soon be shunned by the fitness industry itself. He doesn't really bring any value or anything positive to the equation when we think about what has Greg provided us with. And that philosophical belief of what are you doing in terms of providing value is where Greg seems to completely miss. You could argue that his value is entertainment and that he's providing something that might actually give us something to watch on YouTube. Sure. But beyond this, the things that he's commenting on, the content he's creating, is it really providing anybody anything, any insights, any positive feedback that they could really benefit from? Even when he tries to help people and coach them through bodybuilding shows, even other influencers like the Trend Twins or Brandon Harding, he fails. It's literally impossible for him to avoid drama. In crimes, in drama, in broken relationships, Greg can say that he's learned from his mistakes all he wants, but again, it just seems that he is the common denominator. And I think, personally, he's just too set in his ways to ever change. The sad reality is, is that Greg has become a shill, pushing his cookbook in every video that he creates several times. Someone I'm quite fond of, actually, Alex Hamozzi, says this one statement that I try to follow as a philosophy with all business practices and public practices as well. To make a successful business, you have to give, 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 and then ask, and then repeat the giving, but twice as much, to have any sort of following. Greg really isn't the good person that he shouts about being all of the time, and it's time we look for another role model in the space. Now, I'm not a role model either. I've been through some shit, and I'll be honest, there's many better people than me. But what I wish we could see with Greg, and honestly, what would fill my heart with joy, is just to see him go back to the Greg he was seven or eight years ago. Calm, collected, and educational. Not highly reactive, not highly offensive, but just truly educational. Trying to provide content in every word that he spoke. Trying to provide real resources to people who felt like they needed them in times of desperation. If Greg could become a person who could format his videos in a more constructive and helpful manner, calm himself down, and stop trying to sell so many things to the following that he does have as he's hanging on to it with a couple strings, I think he could be way more successful it would just be more work. And I don't know if people generally like that concept. I don't know if Greg can handle the capacity of needing to do more work to get a better result. I guess um, that's about it, folks. If you liked what you saw, consider subscribing and click the like button. It's a free way to support the channel and it helps me pay a lot of the team to help make these videos. I will see you in the next one.